In this video, I'd like to summarize the results that we found in the previous video and add some important notes and comments to those results. So the main goal of degenerate perturbation theory is to find good states, which were denoted by psi r, which can diagonalize the perturbation Hamiltonian. And here these uh, good states are linear combinations of our original unperturbed states, which we're denoting by n naught k. The main problem then is finding a value for these coefficients so that we know how to replace the eigenstate n naught r by its uh, by the good state psi r. In the last video, we found that the finding the value of these coefficients amounted to solving this eigenvalue equation. So uh, the matrix delta h acting on the vector of uh, these coefficients uh, only scaled those vectors by the corresponding first energy correction to state r. Uh, in the last video, we wrote this equation down like this. Uh, this is an equivalent way of showing it to just make it more clear that this is an eigenvalue problem. And we found that for a non-trivial solution to this problem, so that uh, so for CRK not being equal, uh, not being equal to zero for all k, we require that the determinant of this matrix is equal to zero. So what this means is the first order corrections to the energy they are simply the eigenvalues of the matrix delta h and in general e and r can be can take on different values for different r uh, they don't have to, and sometimes they won't, uh, but generally they, they will. Okay. This matrix uh, delta H has elements and not delta H and not K, where these are our original unperturbed states. For capital N degenerate eigenstates, uh, so N not one, two, and not uh, N, and somewhere in between here would be the state we're looking at and not R. Uh, there are capital N eigenvalues E N one E N R all the way to EN capital N. And these are the first order corrections to the energies of each one of these states. The other important note is that the, the good states that we've been looking for all along Psi R. These are uh, linear combinations of our original unperturbed states. Oops. 
for k equals one to n. The CR case, uh, so the coefficients, these are given by the eigenvectors of the matrix delta H. Okay, so what all of this amounts to is our goal in the general perturbation theory is to diagonalize our perturbation matrix delta H. And that means finding its eigenvalues, which will give us the first order energy corrections for each state and finding the eigenvectors, which will give us uh, the coefficients for the linear combinations of these states that will give us the good states that we're, we've been looking for to diagonalize this matrix in the first place. Some uh, important notes to this. So I mentioned earlier that uh, we were considering the case where the degeneracies were lifted by the perturbation to first order. It's important to keep in mind that even if the degeneracies are not lifted to first order, our results so far are still correct. So the values we get for the energy corrections will still be correct. However, uh, and these will show up as our matrix delta H having degenerate eigenvalues itself. So that means that a, a particular set of states will get the same energy correction and they will remain degenerate. In that case, we would have to go to the second order energy correction to see if the degeneracy is lifted at second order. The other important note is that degeneracies in quantum mechanics usually arise because of symmetries in the problem with the exception of one dimensional problems. Here, the particle confined to a circle is a, a particular exception to this. Uh, that system does have degeneracies, even though it's in one dimension. And to get some intuition behind the degeneracy being lifted is if a perturbation is able to break the symmetry of the problem, at least partially, then the degeneracy of the, uh, the spectrum of that Hamiltonian will be lifted at least partially. So if the perturbation completely breaks the symmetry, the degeneracy will be completely lifted and each state will get a different correction. If the perturbation only partially breaks the symmetry, then some of the de degeneracy will be lifted and some will remain uh, to first order. Then we would have to go to higher orders uh, to consider uh, further symmetry breaking. So, so far, uh, all of this theory probably seems a little abstract. So in the next video, we're going to take up an example where we apply the results that we've derived to a particular problem. We're going to consider uh, a quantum mechanical harmonic oscillators that are coupled by a perturbation Hamiltonian.